buckle up, because you're about to get schooled by the bros from BAM. This is the physics of basketball. Although the slam dunk, like this one here by LeBron James, is commonly known as the most exciting playing basketball, we're going to take you through the fundamental steps in order to play the game. Hopefully, by the end of the video, you will be able to fully appreciate how physics is involved in each aspect of the game and that the slam dunk really isn't everything. So where do we start? What's the first thing that every basketball player should know how to do? Yeah, uh, you there in the back. Oh, sorry, Nitin, that's incorrect. It is not the jump shot, although that was a good guess. Although I love the suspense, I'll just get right to it. The most fundamental part of basketball is dribbling. Without the dribble, none of the game as we know it today would exist. So we're about to break it down via video to show you how physics is involved in the dribble. So let's get started, shall we? This is a regular basketball. Now, when it's bounced, it loses energy, like so. And, it just go, and the energy goes straight into the ground. Now, to compensate for this energy loss, Mark uses his arms and his bulging pectorals to keep, to, to keep the ball bouncing and create force on the ball, allowing it to bounce at a steady height. Okay, so let's review what Ashman just told us. Wasn't really paying attention that well, but I'm pretty sure he said something about applying a force to a basketball. So let's just review that. Although this picture might not be the best example of a bouncing basketball, it does have the same concepts. The hammer, my hand, is acting upon the basketball in a downward force. Now according to Newton's first law, an object at rest tends to stay at rest unless acted upon by an outside source, which it is, in this case, by my hand. When the basketball hits the ground, it transfers some of its energy into the ground because of its elasticity. In a perfect world, the ball would return to the same spot as it was dropped at, but we all know that's not the case. After each individual bounce, the basketball loses some of its energy. So how in the heck are you supposed to play basketball when the ball won't even return to the level that you bounced it at? Well, that's not the case, because each player individually exerts a force on the basketball to make it return to the same spot as it was bounced. As Ashman described earlier, the player uses his muscles in his arm and upper body to exert a force on the ball enough to make it bounce to the same spot. So now that we got dribbling out of the way, let's move on to something that's much more important to the game, the jump shot. Yeah, the jump shot's referred to as the stroke. My boy Larry over here can do it. He can do it all, especially from the three-point line. It's short shorts. Seriously, though, in terms of physics, the jump shot's ginormous. Um, it starts pretty much from the ground up. Uh, you use the legs as a spring, which is compressed and um, forces you to use the energy from the spring uh, to move upward into the arm motion. And this arm motion is usually starting at about eye level, and it kind of creates a spin off the ball that allows you to oh, yeah. put the ball in the hoop at a certain angle. Up then. We're going to show you a demonstration, and it's going to go by my boy, Ben Reasons. He's probably next to me right now, and he's in this picture right here. See him with the arrow? Okay. Although this may not be an ideal shot, Ben will be attempting a half-court shot, which is also known as the big kahuna. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Woohoo! Yeah, that was nuts. Now, uh, if you guys weren't paying attention the first time, uh, why don't you check this out again, because it's going to look just as good. And by the way, this is a semester project, so take it seriously. Oh, yeah. Y yeah, it's not the most high percentage shot, but when you're on Team BAM, it goes down like butter. But seriously, it's important to pay attention to the special aspects of physics during a basketball shot. As Ashman described earlier, the jump, the arm motion, the release, and hopefully the ball going in the hoop. What we forgot to mention earlier was the transfer of energy. Energy transfer is important in a basketball shot because if, it, if there was no energy present, the ball wouldn't go anywhere. The energy starts off at the body 
through the legs to the arms and transferred through the ball enough so that the ball can reach the basket. Let us show you what we mean. As you can see here, Ashton releases the ball with his knees bent okay. in order to get more momentum going towards the basket. You can see me doing the same thing. Even though the three of us couldn't miss, a basketball shot is actually a lot harder than it looks. Once you get the muscle memory down, it's really not that hard. But if you're a, be a beginner at basketball, <clears throat> it's tough to learn the process of taking a shot. So with the simple physics of the dribble and the shot out of the way, we can move on to the most exciting and exhilarating part of the game, the slam dunk. The dunk is actually very similar to the jump shot because energy is transferred from the legs to the upper body. Don't be fooled though. You need a lot more energy to get off the ground in a dunk than you would need in a jump shot. The dunker must fight the forces of gravity and air resistance to get through the air and put the ball in the hoop. Although the dunk is difficult to achieve, um, it is very doable. And as you're going to see here, Ben Reasons, a member of Team BAM, is about to perform something real special. We checked with Edwards, and we're going to give him the members bounce on that one. So we're going to count that as a dunk. Dr. J liked it, and MJ liked it. So if you're not on board, get out of class. Over time, the game has changed, and players have adapted their shots and the way they play around the changes. Nowadays, since the players are more athletic and can jump higher, they have adapted their shots so that they don't need as much arc on the ball to go in. So in final, we just want to say that uh, if you persevere, good things happen. And now that you know the fundamental physics of basketball, you can truly become a star. And if you put in the work, like this guy here, you could be a great. Since you guys have been such a good and attentive class, we decided to throw on some bonus footage. Enjoy. This is the physics of greatness. Give me something special. Oh, that's special. <laughs> Reporter Ben Reasons with a take on actual basketball. Now that we're done with simple physics, let's get to the real stuff. Oh. Yeah, it's a stroke in 13 countries. That's a wrap.